This is a story that I've managed to sidestep ever since I set up the channel. I've constantly alluded to it and to be honest with you, kind of dreaded telling it. It's about how I made a job move to a company that had great promise to a role that I completely coveted and how it all went downhill, <laughs> how I was damaged and the mistakes I made and how I managed to get myself back out of that hole. In short, this is the story of how my project management career nearly ended. So for the last few weeks, the last few weeks I've not been able to make any videos. I've had COVID followed by the flu and it's been probably the longest period of time I've been sick. I haven't been so sick for so long before in my life. And there've been times in the last month when I've been perhaps as miserable as I've ever been in my life. But on reflection, I remembered that there actually was one time when I was far more miserable for longer. So I got a new job working for a company not too far from where I lived. So it was a really easy commute, uh, which was great. <laughs> I'm used to the long commute into London. And it was an assurance role as well, working on portfolio assurance. So it was giving me a great chance to step out of delivery and spend a lot of time working as well with other project managers to try to find out what's going on with their projects, uh, reporting how they're progressing, giving assurance to um, stakeholders and leaders on how projects are being delivered. I'm not going to say who the company was, that wouldn't be fair, and I'm going to keep people's names out of all of this. Day one, I did the induction all morning as interesting as you can imagine it would be. But then on the afternoon, a colleague took me aside and they, they said to me, it's a really nice, shiny looking company from the outside, but it's rotten to the core. On the first week, the CEO was doing a number of town hall meetings and uh, I got a chance to meet with him. And one of the, when I introduced myself and told him what role I was doing, he told me about how there'd been a major project that had been reporting green for weeks and weeks and weeks and then at the go live it had failed and it had put him in a position where he had to basically apologize to the um the well the client in this case was a government and he had to basically apologize to the president of a country and he said he never ever wanted to be put in a position where that happened again i said okay so i got a very clear remit from him that he wanted me to be looking at projects that are in flight and to report and flag early on anything that appeared to be out of place, anything that they need to be concerned about. I said to him at the time that what typically happens, what typically drives the kind of behaviors where people are reporting green for long periods of time on their project when things are going wrong, and not reporting amber or red is a culture of fear and that people are afraid to be transparent and honest. And he agreed about that and said there was possibility that historically that might have been the case, but things had all changed now. So I got involved with the job. I started to create standardized toolkits for assurance, started to create new processes, and started to enhance the way that assurance was delivered in this organization. A recently appointed director then pointed me towards one of the major projects in the organization and asked me to take a closer look at it because, quote, something smelled wrong about it. I could see that it was an important project and they had a lot of um, senior people involved in it. There was an awful lot riding on this project and uh, an awful lot riding for the company's future on this project as well. So I said, OK, that's fine. I'll look into it but you know, it could get political. And I was told, don't worry, I've got your back. So I started carrying out the review and because Agile wasn't my strongest area and there was an Agile delivery team working as part of the project, I got an Agile expert from within the business to come and join, finance expert as well to come and look at the finances. There were no issues with the finances at all, that was fine. Um, but uh, the Agile expert and I, we worked really quite quite well together, quite closely throughout the whole review. And the director wanted to have daily feedback as well. Just give me the uh, the headlines that you find for each day. I said, okay, you know, 
so long as you understand that, you know, you don't take things out of context that, you know, if we find something that seems to be wrong on day one, we might well find something that's right about it on day two. So don't act hastily. Um, this is just for information. There will be a full report at the end. And the director was understanding about that and said that they didn't want to be uh, surprised by, you know, whatever the report comes up with in a few weeks time. They'd rather see these things coming and I said, okay, that's fine. So we had a daily engagement where I was sending feedback on how we were progressing and it was moving fine. We arranged a feedback session with the director and the chief operating officer where the agile expert, the finance expert and I would just give our individual feedback. And the idea was this was timed to be a few days before an exco and they wanted to make sure that they got their messaging right before talking to the exco about a project, which it was becoming clear had problems. As the review was concluding, it wasn't looking very good for the project. There were a number of sprints that were taking place where activities were falling from one to the next to the next to the next. And there was no true way to predict exactly when this project was ever going to end. And there was a date on there and there were other projects, key projects that were dependent on that date. And I had absolutely no confidence at all that it was going to achieve that date. In the days leading up to giving the feedback session, I found that the project manager had resigned. Uh, he'd given his notice and he was leaving the business. Um, when I inquired about this, not, not with him, because that just seemed insensitive, uh, but with his uh, line management, I was given the impression that it was actually my review that had pushed him out the door. What I found out later on was, do you remember that daily feedback I was giving and how I asked, please don't act on it? Apparently that was getting drip fed along to his line management and they pretty much leaned on him and said, if you don't jump, you're going to get pushed. So on, the, so on the day of the feedback review, the agile expert, the finance expert and I turned up pretty much expecting just to find the two of them. And what we found actually was most of the exco were there, the heads of departments, it was the, uh, the product head was in there. Um, the, Chief of risk was dialed in. A number of people were dialed in. I had no presentation pack to prepare for multiple people coming in talking this way. I had a, a Word document to talk to and to explain to the people that I thought were going to be in this meeting. And it turned out, you know, half the leadership were there. So anyway, uh, did the best we could. It was unfortunate we couldn't share information really on the screen because we just weren't prepared to do so. So there was a lesson learned out of that. Whenever you go into any presentation, make sure you've got a deck. So we went through the feedback. Um, as I say, the finance expert, they didn't have any problems. They thought everything was okay there. The agile expert said that the agile teams were delivering okay. This contradicted a little bit with what I'd reported that things were running late and things weren't being done. The agile expert was pretty much talking about their methodology, their approach, and Essentially, their transparency, they were doing all the right things. They were flagging that there was a problem. It's just that the problem wasn't working at the project management level where it wasn't being acted on. That perceived discrepancy, though, did come back to haunt us. So meeting ended. Uh, there were some product people involved who I hadn't been made aware of that they were going to be there. And I made a point of apologizing to them. They were hearing this bad news for the first time in this kind of a way, in a public way. I didn't expect it to be like that. And, you know, they weren't happy, but uh, they grudgingly accepted my apology. Although one of them did continue to ignore me whenever he saw me ever since. Afterwards, the initial feedback was pretty good. Um, it had been a good report. It, the review had been conducted in the right way. And generally, it seemed to have gone well. The report was good. It had a number of recommendations in there on how to get the project back under control. There were no personal attacks in there or there's nothing unprofessional in there. It was a good report. But over the next few days, I started to notice that the narrative was changing on this. The story had changed. The report hadn't landed well. Um, there were questions about the discrepancy between uh, my view and the agile experts view. There were questions about my competence to assess the technology and the development that was happening in the company, considering I only recently arrived in the business. But then the worst part was that the director had implied that 
this had harmed my reputation and that of the assurance function itself, and that I was now damaged and shouldn't be involved in key projects. What I didn't realize when I wrote the report and when I gave the feedback was that I'd kicked a political hornet's nest. There was no appetite at senior levels to have a report going around saying that the project was going to fail. I'm sure that with enough time they could get the project to deliver what was intended, but nobody had any idea of predicting when it would be ready by. So it was out of control. And my report reported honestly. What I discovered later on is that people who'd reported honestly in the past had very short careers at this business. And there was another lesson learned. What they wanted was a report that just said the project manager was at fault. Get rid of them, get a new one in, and everything's going to be fine. Funnily enough, though, when the new PM arrived and took over the role, they looked at my report, they looked at the information they had available to them, and immediately asked for a change request to move the project timescales out. So, in a way, I was vindicated within weeks of this all happening. But learning that the director, and learning this from more than one person, the director had said that I was damaged and having to just work on minor admin tasks through the summer whilst I waited to get fired was demoralizing. It was during this time that I saw the first scan of my first child. And as I was looking at that, weird shape in my wife's belly and hearing its heartbeat for the very first time rather than being overwhelmed by feelings of love and happiness I was filled with sheer terror trying to understand how I was going to support my family what should have been one of the happiest moments of my life had been ruined I tried reaching out to the director to say that I'd learned certain things from this experience that there were steps that could go into place for doing future reviews, for delivering feedback and so on. Uh, and I dropped them a message and 10 minutes later, my boss's boss came storming up to me and told me to never email them again. That they didn't want to hear from me. Time passed. I got on with the light duties that I'd been asked to do. I delivered on some new processes. I gave feedback on some workflows. It was pretty light stuff. Interestingly, though, during that period, it was so light. I was able to, in my spare time, just start up this little blog that eventually, I suppose, evolved into this channel um, where I gave advice to people in PMOs. So the funny thing is, I can't really read that content anymore because it's still kind of anchored in a way to the feelings that I was having at the time. So, you know, go to the website and enjoy it, but I can't read it. <laughs> anyway, this reputational harm of being considered damaged by leadership, it made me angry. And there's not a lot that really makes me angry, but injustice, no matter who the victim is, will always make me angry. And on this occasion, I was the victim, so <laughs> doubly so. I suppose that anger made me defensive, overly bureaucratic, more severe. So I made up my mind to leave and I reactivated a business that I'd had when I was contracting and started getting that set up and just ready for any kind of opportunities that would come along. And I got plenty of interviews, but... <laughs> Whenever I got to the part of an interview where someone asked me why I was leaving, I couldn't really hide the anger that was still so raw and so visible. I suppose no one really wants to hire someone who's so consumed by a negative emotion. Meanwhile, back on the project, perceptions were starting to shift. Uh, another change request had been submitted, and it was pretty clear that there were problems on the project now. There was no hiding it anymore. And that continued to vindicate me and the report. So perceptions had changed. And when another major project got into trouble, I was invited to 
carry out a review and try to uncover the root cause of its problems. So I wasn't damaged anymore. But nobody took the time to apologize or to explain themselves or to acknowledge that I hadn't been treated fairly. And by that point, my anger had morphed into contempt for the leadership involved and for the company. And suddenly I was on my way to becoming someone I really didn't want to be. I was discontent on the verge of becoming malcontent. And then the strangest thing happened. The company wanted to make sure we were all healthy and well and arranged for us all to have blood pressure tests. And I remember sitting outside and the instruction were to sit outside before you go in for your blood pressure test and just sit still and be calm. And as I was sitting there, the director who had ignored me and didn't want to hear from me came walking past and said, Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. How have you been? <laughs> I was like, Fine, I'm busy working on this other project. And they said, Well, it was good that we learned so much from your previous review. Um, I hope that you learned that you can fail fast, and that's a good thing. So, anyway, I went into the blood pressure test with my blood pressure pumping. <laughs> Oh dear. I was so wrapped up in my own feelings of how hurt I felt and how disappointed I was by how this super promising career prospect had gone so badly so quickly. I hadn't recognized that I was living in this broken relationship. And it was very much like the breakdown of a romantic relationship where you've got. <laughs> Two parties who have fallen out of love and way out of trust with each other, but they're forced to still live in a house and they just resent each other being there. And in my case, I hadn't found another job to move on to, but I hadn't done anything, despite my negativity, I hadn't done anything sufficient to be fired so they couldn't get rid of me either and were stuck together. Fortunately, in the month when my son was born, an opportunity did come up and it was a contract opportunity so it was quite lucrative but the commute was two hours drive each way completely opposite life arrangement at the worst possible time and even though it involved having to stay overnight at another location and be away from my new child and miss out on those early days of his life I had to take it it got me out of an incredibly bad place, gave me an opportunity to do the work, enjoy the work again, find my confidence again, and to create a new reputation. What did I learn from all of this? Well, I learned that toxic places can create toxic people. I learned that when under stress, we do truly become the worst versions of ourselves. I learned that bad moments can overshadow the most wonderful moments in your life. The experience, to be honest with you, killed my belief that there's such a thing as a job for life. Even in the best environments, I still have cynicism now. And it made me very cynical of any boss who claims to have my back. So what should you do if ever you discover that you're regarded as damaged? Get out. And get out as fast as you can. Take a pay cut. Do a long commute. Get somewhere else. Get somewhere clean. And be the best version of yourself. I really didn't want to tell this story. Mm.